So today I'm going to do a job that has been on the cards for some time and is going to, fingers crossed, save me a shed load of money. So today we are going to tackle the Clutch Slave Master Cylinder. Now, if you've got an ST1300 and you notice that your clutch fluid is slowly but surely dripping away, and um, that is because you've got a leaky clutch cylinder or a slave clutch cylinder. Now there is a very good guide out there that shows you how to get it. It is finicky, you need a number of things. You also need hands like a lady. So this should go really well. Okay, when it comes to tools, you're gonna to need the following. Now, I'm doing this after the job. So to be honest, my tool choice has slightly changed. You are definitely gonna to need some oil to re-top up the oil that you lose. You are going to need some brake cleaner to clean up your uh, to the cylinder when you get it out. You're going to need brake fluid to flush your system. And you are going to need the lithium grease to put on the end of the rod that goes into the slave cylinder. Now you are going to need a 10mm spanner to crack the bleed nipple uh, to flush the uh, or to replace the brake fluid. You are going to need an 8mm um, an 8 mil socket and that is going to be to undo the three securing bolts on the mast on the cylinder on the slave cylinder and you are going to need a 10 mil version to take the nut out of the um, shift linkage. When it right so you will need the 12 mil for the um, banjo the banjo that attaches to the slave cylinder you will need a method of marking the position of the shift you will need a screwdriver that will undo and fit the uh, reservoir to when you change the brake fluid and um, a well fitting one and then you are going to need a number of sockets so we've all discussed you need an eight you need a ten socket um, now I can't now these two tools here were from uh, Lidl and to be honest they were just the right size I don't know if you can see those they were just the right size they are small stubby um, tools and with those and with an extension uh, an extension a flexible extension that did make the job a lot easier for uh, putting it back on um, and you will I also use kind of cotton buds to clean out the master cylinder as well you need a master cylinder kit obviously you will also need a gasket kit which does not come with the master cylinder kit so you need to buy that separately you will need a new oil filter and you will need a method of taking the old oil filter and putting the new one on you will need lights you will need a thin bladed screwdriver you will need a 5mm allen key or a, uh, an allen bolt uh, allen bolt sorry a hex bolt why am i keep saying bolts socket a hex socket to take the fairing off and um, i found long pliers i found those essential in getting everything back on together okay guys that's the tools now we're going to look at making room for the actual job itself so what we need to do first of all is while on the centre stand we need to remove both the left hand side and the right hand side fairly. Okay, that's this side off. Now I'm going to do it exactly the same for the other side. Okay, so working on the left hand side of the bike, you can now access the oil filter and we're going to remove the oil filter and that is going to lose us about a half a litre of uh, oil which we will have to replace at the uh, after the job is done. So Okay, with the oil filter removed, we're now going to come to the right hand side of the bike and underneath the centre of the exhaust, you're going to see a, I think that's a 8, no, that's a 10 mil bolt to come completely out and we need to wriggle this off and the splines, but not before marking the location and the position on that face. Okay, so once you've removed the linkage, you're then going to give yourself some more room by just removing these hoses. So if you just follow the hoses all the way along, you'll come to a bale which keeps them nice and tight. Just pull them out of the bale and then just tuck them somewhere nice and 
out the way. So let me just, I think you're looking there. So I'm just going to tuck them on top of the swing arm. That'll get them out of the way for us for the rest of this. So I'll throw those up there. Right, they're done. Okay, so our linkage is hanging free. We've moved the bales out of the way. You've got this cable here which goes to the speed sensor. I've left the speed sensor on because I think I'm just going to ring the bolts out if I try and get that out. But the one behind it, which is this, I'm hoping you can see, which is the silver thing, which is right next to it. Which is right next to it. Let me see if I can point this out. But the silver thing right next to it, this thing here, that is your slave master. It's connected by an 8mm bolt there, 8mm bolt at the top and an 8mm bolt at the other side. There's also a banjo bolt at the top. You need to release that banjo bolt. Once you've, once you've ascertained, which is good, once you've ascertained that you are able to undo these bolts, and I would do that prior to doing this, just make sure you can get access to these bolts with the tools that you're going to use. Once you've said you can, or once you know you can, then undo the banjo bolt at the top. Now you're going to get fluid leak at that point. So get some rags and get that ready because that is going to leak. Okay, quick update. So, this bolt is very simple to do from this side with a small ratchet. The top one is also very easy to do with a small ratchet. But to get to access to the other side, the other side of this, you need to be on the other side of the bike. So you can get two of them from the right hand side, but you need to go on to the left hand side to get the left hand side bolt. It's not impossible. Uh, and you can see the bolt from there with a good light. So recommendation, don't waste, don't waste 10, 15 minutes trying to get to the other side of this with the ratchet. Go around the other side of the bike. It is much simpler. I'm hoping you can see up there. But if you can't, I apologise now, you have to loosen the banjo bolt at the top of the Slave Master cylinder. The reason you need that ratchet is to the only way you can get it over the top is at a 90 degree angle. So take the spanner, take the ratchet spanner with a flexible head and bend the, a, the ratchet part 90 degrees, hook it over the banjo bolt and then lever it so then you kind of then you uh, then you remove it from 90 degrees bring it to about 45 degrees and you can use it then to open and it is most likely where you're going to remove all the skin from your knuckles so i'm now loosening the banjo bolt um i'm not quite sure if i have to remove it it does just say loosen so i take it once i uh my, my, <laughs> my reluctance is to take the 12 mil off the top of the banjo bolt because it's a peg to get back on now um, so I think what I'm going to try and do is just remove the entire bolt so I'm now going to use the small spanner sorry the, more, the small ratchet spanner to remove the If I can, there's obviously not enough grip on that one. So just this part just takes patience. That's all it is. It is just patience. Just do it slowly, uh, and you'll have no issues. It's not difficult to do at all. Um, that's it, you can actually get the bolts out now with just fingers, that, that's how that loose they are. So it is just patience guys, that's all you need. If you feel yourself getting frustrated, walk away, make a cup of tea, and then come back again. Because actually, so far the job has been exactly how it says in the walkthrough. That's it, just get that screw, there you go, that's a bolt. So that's my first bolt out. is at the top 
I am looking forward to a cup of tea, I'm not going to lie. So, I think that's about as loose as that top bolt's going to be. So there's another one. This is where it really does pay to have small fingers. Because they are tiny. Okay, I can get to it with my top finger. Unbelievable how tight this is. And it is just poor design. I'm not looking forward to getting these bolts back in. But at least... At least they're coming out okay. Now the other one, the last one is on the other side. So I will... Uh, I will go to the other side to do that one rather than try. The one thing I would say, what would make this job a lot easier is if you took the brake pedal off because the brake pedal is right in the way and does stop actually you squeezing your hand in. Okay, so that's a banjo bolt out now. As you can see, it's now removed. It's got three crush washers and I'll show you how those fit when we put it back so on. So basically what you're doing is you're just prising it off. So it comes it comes off at a 90 degree angle. So basically I started from beneath with a very thin blade screwdriver such as this one. There you go. Thin blade screwdriver. Put it in a small gap and just twisted and just free it up. Okay, so all of that was to get this off the bike. This is the part. So we're now going to clean that up. I'm going to use cotton buds uh, to clean out that. Oh, you can see that is just minging. The next thing to do is look at this. So we've got a new spring so we can take the spring off. Comes off. We've also got a new seal. So remember there is a bevel on it and that is the way the bevel goes. Okay, just screwdriver under the lip and then just remove. So we've it. taken the uh, one side off. We're now going to remove this just inside. You can see how damaged and warm that is. So that is just completely again in there. Just lift up. Oh, you can see that that is just given up the ghost completely. That is just soft, malleable, just broken. Okay, so basically I've cleaned up just a little bit have a rake fluid on the inside we're just going to wipe down the okay and then just going to take okay I'm just going to lubricate that okay to pop that together spring is compressed and we're just now going to clean up okay so my piston my cylinder is all now cleaned up and the new seals are now in place I've cleaned up the gasket as best I can but you don't get a lot of room underneath there so now I'm just going to take the new gasket and fit the new gasket. Okay, a quick shout out to Andrew on the uh, ST 1300 form because I wasn't quite sure and I think he's just saved me a massive panic. So basically when you take this washer out or this, it basically comes out and uh, I'll give, show you the bits. That's basically how it came out. What you don't see in the new one is there is a washer hidden in that plastic and often if you are going to take this the uh, oil seal out it will leave the washer in there 
and that needs to be prized now. Like so. So that's just the back of the washer that remained in there. Thankfully, that was discovered prior to putting and panicking that I had the wrong kit. So I'm just going to quickly clean that one up. And then we are ready to put it all back on the bike. Much appreciated, Andy. Okay, so one of the final jobs to do. I don't know if you can see that. Let me just see if I can quickly uh, throw some light on that. Okay, that's a little bit better. So where is the push rod? You can just see the push rod there. So if I leave that there, bring my other hand round. Okay, this here is the push rod. And that needs to be lubricated with some high temperature grease so lithium grease to be used on that so the uh, so the service manual says apply lithium grease to that uh, push rod prior to putting the piston back up okay guys hopefully you can now see that's the banjo belt with the three new washers installed the three bolts are done up so now all I've got to do is tighten everything up and then bleed the clutch system. Ah, never ends. Okay, so the slave cylinder's back on, torqued up. The looms, so now you just put you down at an angle, are back into bail and they have now been secured. You can't really see them under there, but that's them. And the, and the linkage. Let me just see if I can get that one. Where's that linkage? It's there. So the shift linkage is now back on. So that just leaves the um, the oil filter. So I put a new oil filter on there, and then I shall be bleeding the system. That's the next part. Okay guys, as usual, you've put some oil in, just a dip. I ain't going to put a lot, and then I'm just going to use that and kind of just go around the edges with it. That means it's not bone dry when it goes in. Doesn't need more than that. Now I'll crawl under the bike once again and put this in. Okay, so... Now protected our paintwork from any spillages that may occur. Ah, they shouldn't occur to be honest. Should be fine, but you never know. So we just cover up just in case. Okay, so when it comes to bleeding the reservoir, the reservoir is up there, and you come down below the winglet or whatever it's called, and you will see. Let me just get my arm in. You'll see the bleed nipple that you need here. Okay, so what we need to do is a 10 mil spanner on there. We need to crack it open. Apologies, let's get one back. So you need to pump the clutch lever, hold it in, and then open the bleed nipple. Close the bleed nipple and then let go of the lever. Simple. And just continue doing that. Okay, once you're happy that the, uh, the, the lever has enough tension behind it and you're not seeing any more air come up, put the cap back on. Now, don't worry about the level of this at the moment because it's on the side stand. So what we'll do is when we put it on the centre stand, we'll take another reading of it. But for now, we're just going to put the top back on. Uh, we're going to do it up, just lightly. We're not going to do it all the way up, we just don't want it spinning when we start moving the bike. So that should be it. Right, we've got one last job, which is to put 
fill up the oil or top up the oil because we lost some whilst we were doing this. It should be good enough. Okay, so the next job is to check how much oil we've lost and to top her up if need be. So you do this by um, underneath the right hand side wing, you will see this. And that is your oil gauge. And as you can see, mine is slightly high. So maybe I've been, but she may not be completely level. You do need to do this on a completely level surface. Okay, so that's how you check your oil. Now let me show you where you uh, top her up if need be. Now normally, for some, <laughs> somehow I've managed to lose my centre punch, so I'm going to use a nail. I'll take it through, I'm going to remove the trim clip. Okay, so with the... Now, release the side. And then what she does, she basically lifts up. And there is your filler cap for the oil. So remember, she has to be level. Keep an eye on the sight glass. Top her up, check. Top her up, check. And don't overfill. Um, so that's the first one. Now we're going to go back to the brakes and we're going to check the brake reservoir. Okay, the very last job. So basically now the bike is on the centre stand, we can turn the front until it's absolutely level and we know we're not going to spill any brake fluid over our tank remove the screws again of course I've just removed the paper towel so let me quickly go and get some paper towel right. two screws, don't lose them because they'll come a nightmare to replace and just open them up See, and I'm not blocking you. She's actually very close. So, we'll just put these down and not tread on them. Taking the brake fluid, all we're going to do is we're going to fill her. There is a line in there. Already marked, so you can see where you can fill up to. So, we are going to fill to the top. There we go. And I've just obviously just spilt some. Just a tad little catch back before it does any damage. There we go. All under done. Right, that's it caught. Cool. And that is up on the line. So if I make just a slight adjustment, that's actually dead straight. So that is it guys. That's the clutch fluid change, the slave master change, the oil topped up and all filter change. That is the complete job. And what we'll do is screws that we took out, we'll tighten up these properly this time. have a bit of a wash up okay guys that is um the job done <laughs> you gotta have a laugh it was it was not as easy as i thought it was going to be but i didn't think it was going to be easy i thought it was going to be quite difficult to do although it is a very very simple task it is a very very simple task it is incredibly difficult to do if you have large hands. If you have the hands of a small child, you will probably be okay. But there is next to no room um, at the back. So I'm hoping that you kind of saw the, uh, the angles. And it is all about angles. You have to constantly, you'll be surprised, just you have to constantly move close to the motorbike, away from the motorbike, so you can stretch your arms and kind of get through. The task is easy, and there's very little you can actually do wrong. Once you actually get it off, getting it off is fairly simple. Getting it back on, getting the banjo bolt back on, was actually, I found the most frustrating part of the entire thing. 
you need those washers on the bolt itself prior to the bolt being going down. It's no good putting the last washer on top of the master cylinder and then trying to get the banjo bolt through it. It doesn't work and you'll waste hours doing that. You need to make sure that all three banjo bolts and the banjo, uh, sorry, the banjo washers, apologies, let's go back a step because I may have, I may have just got confused. I've only just finished. So you've got to make sure that the banjo bolt has the three washers on it prior to putting it down on top of the cylinder. Um, if you don't and the, cylinder, and the washer drops, it will drop at a funny angle and you will never get the bolt past it and into the position where you're able to make the first turn and get those first cut and the bites on the thread. You'll be there for hours. So the three washers have to be on the bolt itself. And I was using long nose pliers, I was using a pick to it was that part was the most frustrating and that was the part that I got to last night when I just called it a day. I think it was about nine o'clock in the evening I called it. Once you start losing that light, it doesn't get any easier. If you do it in bright sunshine, you actually get quite a bit, you get some light under them, it's not too bad. So um, tips and tricks. I had a whole list of tips and tricks that I was going to say, but to be honest, on putting them back and trying, I don't think any of them work. It is just persistence. Um, so you can get to the, the obviously you get three bolts on the master cylinder you can do two from one side of the bike it's a lot easier if you go to the other side of the bike for the third the one closest to the oil filter you can get an extension bar on there one of those thin ones which I got um, you can get that on there bring all your tools that's another tip bring all your tools I know they say oh you need this this the more tools you have the more options you have when you find yourself suddenly, uh, you just, <laughs> you're just not able to progress. And I found myself several times in that point where I just physically was not able to progress. I had to just stand up, walk away. And even going for a cup of tea wasn't long enough. Um, I, 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 I did half, I, I disassembled it yesterday, cleaned everything out and I reassembled it um, to today when I got home. So. All are told with video, because videoing does add a whole another element to it, and I wanted to try, well, I'm hoping I've captured the, the essence of the job that someone can look at and kind of evaluate if they want to do. If you want to get this done at a Honda dealer, I've heard figures of around eight to 800 to 1,000 pounds to get that same job, because they will just take the engine out and then it's a 15 minute job and put the engine back in. So, I've heard, 800 to a thousand pound for that job am i right in thinking that i think i am i haven't phoned them i'm just looking at the forums maybe it's, i think it's like a thousand dollars so if it's a thousand dollars it's about 800 quid 750 quid whatever it is it's i don't have it it, it may as well be it could be 300 pound i don't have it but i'm sure it's closer to that top end of a thousand so it is a big job and it's a big job for a reason um is there anything else that I'd like to add? I'm hoping I got all the tools. There is a very good guide. If you go onto the um, ST1300 forums or go onto any of the Facebook pages, they all kind of talk. There's a massive community out there and they are willing to help. There was a couple of times where I just looked and said, I thought, no, nah, that doesn't look right to me. And I posted on there and within 15 minutes, I had the answer. Cannot recommend, just make contact with those guys on the forum. They are, sorry, on the form on the Facebook pages. They are excellent. They are an excellent resource. If you're going to do this yourself, if you're not part of that, go over, join, be a, become a member and just introduce yourself because can't stipulate how important it is to have someone else that may have done this that can just say, no, that's right, that's not right. Um, so I go shout out to, I think it's Andy Rue is one of the guys and I would have put that seal on wrong and I'd have put that back on the bike because I didn't know and flat I'll put my hand up and say looking at that that looked a permanent piece and when I put a screwdriver in it it didn't budge and I thought that was a permanent fixture in and I would have put the thing on top and I'd have put that back on done it up and I'd be now having that conversation with somebody and they'll say yeah yeah that's a washer you take that out and I'd have had to have done it all over again and that would have broken my heart so Make those resources, get those, get those people online that know how to do this stuff and communicate, introduce yourself and be friendly. Um, is that everything? I hope that is everything. 
you can leave a message any comments leave a message below and um, if you want clarification on anything leave messages below i'll pick them up and i'll do whatever i can to help if that's what you're interested in would i recommend this to somebody i think that's it it's not a difficult job you've just got to have resources tools and patience that's all you need to do it and it is not hard it's not an expensive tools they're not expensive tools the ones that you need they're fairly cheap i found the most useful tool in there the screwdriver and the, and the stubby uh, socket from Lidl's and I think that was about £4.99 so you don't need Snap-on, you don't need all those other tools it's a fairly simple job to do but the more tools you have the more options you have and that's the word you have options the more tools you have the more options you have um, I think that's it guys you take it easy you ride safe I wanted this MOT for the weekend but that has taken basically two days in three hours three hours it was meant to take that's taken me two days to do, but is now done. This was supposed to, so I haven't got the fuel filter anyway. Sorry, I haven't got the fuel filter, but I do have the air. So I'm going to put the air filter in there. I've got to wait till the fuel filter, which was supposed to have come today and it didn't. Hopefully it'll come tomorrow. Fix that on. I'm sure I've addressed the leak, the, or the petrol leak that was there. I'm sure that's now been addressed. And this will be MOT. I wanted to take it to Kempton this weekend, but... I can't see it happening to be honest. I also want to get a tube bender, something big that sits on a freaking a kind of a plinth that goes cement in the ground. A proper tube bender, not one of those those little tube benders that you can get. I mean, a proper. That's what I wanted, um, but I haven't got the car, so um, I don't know what I'm going to do because I won't be able to carry that on my bike. Or maybe I will. I may see you at Kempton Market. I will see you at the bike shed because I will be at the bike shed. Um, so I'll be looking around there. If you see us, pop in and say hello. Don't just walk by. <laughs> Don't just walk by. Please say hello. Um, and I shall see you all later. You take care of yourself. And uh, ride safe. Weather's fantastic. Take it easy. Bye bye.